the next person who is on stage, we all know this person very well. <laughs> and uh, for our queries, for our concern, we reach this person day in, day out. And she is there to help us out day in, day out, even in exams also, in terms of coordination also, in terms of, um, you can say, course contents also. She is the lady here who is standing here. <laughs> She is one person who is the most reachable person for us. And uh, she help us day in, day out, our team, our various teams of IT, uh, IITs to grow faster and uh, make the exam smooth. So uh, next, uh, Ms. Um, Bharti ma'am will talk about more about operations and how we work, uh, how we, uh, work with local chapters, OK? So before that, uh, as we said, we'll uh, show you a small video. Actually, the video is available on the website, but not sure how many of you have seen it. So this is a video that has been consolidated from the feedback that we received from various centers as candidates were coming out of it. So in many of the cities, we deploy our crew and we have them stationed outside exam centers and we capture the feedback from them. We just put it together as uh, some highlights of uh, what we do. NPTEL is today one of the biggest repositories of technical courses in engineering and sciences in the world. I enroll for embedded systems. Introduction to data analytics and machine learning. So introduction to modern application development. Project planning and control. So introduction to programming in Sikyata. I did the health research fundamentals. Building science. Introduction to airplane performance. I enrolled for the English language for competitive exams. This is my 11th exam. I'm an associate professor in chemistry at Pachayapas College, Chennai. I'm working as an assistant professor. I'm working as an associate professor. Research scholar. I'm a scientist in DRDO. In Rameshwar Engineering Sensor Transfusion Manufacturing Company. Employed in TVS Group. I'm a pediatrician. I'm working in Chennai Port. We third year, truly in electrical engineering. I'm working as an engineering manager. I'm 17 years old now. Completed my 12th. Expiring entrepreneur. I have my own startup. So, uh, I'm a doctor actually. I'm working at Yama Motors R&D. I'm working in the RDR Cancer Institute in Chennai. I feel much happy to attend this exam. Learning experience is excellent. The videos were extraordinary and marvelous. Whatever the questions posted in the forum, it's immediately being answered. That is an amazing work what they are doing at really. With respect to NPTEL, the quality of lectures and delivery, the contents to the students, no doubt, unquestionable. And it's too good. The examination today I really enjoy. I've been traveling more than two hours uh, daily. I just hearing that entire video conversation throughout my journey, like not sitting in the home. एक तो हमने ऑपरेशन रिसर्च का किया है, दूसरा जो है न्यूमेरिकल एनालिसिस पर किया है, अच्छा पढ़ाया जा रहा है, जो लेक्चर्स आ रहे हैं वो भी बहुत अच्छे आ रहे हैं, मेन है कि स्टूडेंट को थोड़ा सा जो इसमें और काफी फायदा मिलता है। I was working in a different domain totally, like main frames. So the course which I took was introduction to modern application development. So this course was very helpful because I've learned new technologies. Each and every day we learned new topics and the assignments are also something which we're able to apply, search further. So I'm looking forward for more courses in the future. The course content was very extraordinary to be precise. Even if you compare to other websites, they don't offer certification like MIT, or uh, any Carnegie Mellon open course, or, but this is a very good initiative by the IITs and IACs which can improve the standard of education 
it has taken our Indian education to other level. I was expecting to get gold medal by IIT, but I don't know it will be there or not. The forum was useful. I posted many questions. I got immediate response also. It helped me a lot. The exam for uh, acoustics, it's related to noise and vibration. It's been well organized. Now I'm looking for more courses relating to my subject. I uh, see this particular exam as a self-exploration of knowledge among the faculty members. Uh, as well as it helps students to enrich their subject domain to a greater extent. We are all placed in telecom domain, so we thought taking up a course related to telecom would help us. So we took up the course principles of MIMO, OFTM and CDMA wireless communication. Health research fundamentals, very useful actually, the course is very useful. We are basically from CSE department, uh, even though we were not so fluent in this programming and all, but while watching those videos we got to know the nook and corners about that. I have taken project planning and control. This was really effective and useful. I think this will help me in my career and in my placements. And this is a very useful and a new experience for me. Got a lot of steps from these three months. I have learned more in these three months than taking some papers in the college. It's a nice opportunity for people outside of IITs to be able to take an exam that is conducted by IIT. So the standards are pretty good, obviously. It's a great opportunity for every student in many other colleges to get uh, a certificate from IIT. The way they teach, the way they teach, the way they represent the subject is also awesome and uh, it's, they, come, they come up with the recent trends and they talk about the application. In our syllabus, and all, they just focus on marks. This NPT uh, helps me to focus on how to, what is hardware, how, what we can do, what we can uh, apply from this. It's very useful to me because uh, I am from the BTEC side. I heard from the college seniors like you should do the course from the NPTEL and I found very useful and I'm very very productive. Even at the age of 50 plus we are getting some enthusiasm to go through all these lectures and all those things. I think the course was really informative and it has helped me a lot so I think now I can become a good project developer or something. Entire site was responsive so whatever I asked they uh, answered it very very clearly. I think I'll definitely take up one more course. I'm taking biopharmaceutical technology, so I have done my uh, online course on uh, biostatistics and design of experiments. It would be useful for my career. For youngster, definitely it is useful. But this type of courses, if you find in other places, it is very, very costly. But here it is, uh, for learning purpose, it is cheap. For obtaining a certificate, it is only a nominal fees. I didn't college in my college. I learned this course. I learned basic concepts that were not clear, they were clear. और जो काफी सारे एग्जाम्स जो भी असाइनमेंट असाइनमेंट हुआ करते थे मेज प्रॉब्लम काफी सारी और प्रॉब्लम्स उनको सॉल्व करने में काफी मजा आया टुडे आई टुक एनहांसिंग सॉफ्ट स्किल्स एंड पर्सनालिटी नाउ डेज मोस्ट ऑफ द कोर्सेज आर सपोर्टेड विद टेक्स्ट मटेरियल दैट वी लाइक Certification in my profession it is very helpful. I think it is good from a resume point of view. Plus, it is a kind of attestment that you have this basic knowledge and then you can go to an advanced course. It's a fantastic. I never experienced such a coordination. It's a very good experience. Another person from my college has taken it in another center. And both of us feel that the teaching was absolutely brilliant throughout the course. And it's not only theory, even practice is there. They, went, they actually showed us through the flight lab and they actually had very, very practical examples. I appreciate uh, the initiative of MHRD and uh, the uh, strenuous efforts taken by uh, the IIT groups for uh, providing uh, uh, the latest and uh, technically sound education on online mode. This is the first time I felt that uh, some course for uh, working professionals and uh, it is well organized as such. I must congratulate IITs for taking this initiative to take education and the contents that they have as part of NPTEL to all the people, uh, particularly the student community who can benefit a great deal. It was hosted by a professor from IIT Kharagpur and it was honestly it was recommended by my faculty just so we could gain more insight into the working of these systems as per se. Uh, the question paper was pretty good. I expected a lot uh, to be a lot tougher than it was. But I guess the practice which was given on the site was pretty useful for me. Nowadays, uh, doctors are expected to do a lot of research also, apart from seeing patients. So this course helped me to learn a lot. Giving all those information in an open source manner, first of all, I have, being a technical person, I am congratulating them, I am thank, uh, thanking them. It was a nice experience. It's wonderful in sitting along with the students and solving the problems makes us to be more concentrated with the course, to have a better deliverability of the content to the recent trends are in par with the 
reputed institutions. Our colleges, they don't take at this high level of uh, programming and uh, found the videos very useful because like it made me think out of the box. It was a very uh, useful both from urban area and from rural area and for rural area students we would be able to pull the students. Most of the students are benefited, most of them are appeared and got certificates. Since we had a certificate exam, we prepared even better and this uh, MCQ based uh, online exam was a very good experience. We would love if uh, there were more such courses coming up and on various other topics because under health this was all the only one available. I was looking for such a course for a long time. This course is really like uh, you know, bringing a bridge across what we are doing now and what we are going to do in the future. I learned uh, more concepts uh, in C++ in depth and NPTEL exam was very good. He he taught each and every line uh, in depth, so we can understand very well. Definitely once you get hooked onto this particular process of learning, you will find that you can learn at your own pace and time, and you will also be benefited with a certification, which is also uh, what okay, stamped by industry, and therefore you will find it is an employment facilitator. This program will be the harbinger of a big intervention in India in the area of online education so that we can address the grand challenge of providing high quality and useful education to a very, very large number, probably the largest number of youngsters in the world. Thank you. So what you saw is just a kind of a put together of some feedback that we wanted to showcase. If you go to our NPTEL website, at the bottom we have a link called feedback and in that we have all the detailed videos. So you can, if you have the patience and time, you can actually go through and see what people have said in detail about our courses. So getting back to the uh, presentation, yeah, this is the NOC portal uh, where we showcase all the toppers. So there are two places uh, where we showcase toppers, uh, if you've seen it. One is a course-wise topper showcasing that we do, which is for every course, we say who are the toppers in this particular course. And here we can also see the variety of people who are there in every course. What we talk about say, Today we have about 70% uh, students who declare themselves to be college students, 15% to 20% is faculty members and about 10 to 15% is from the industry. The split we can see directly from the toppers, you have uh, Tata Consultancy Services, somebody is topping, there is a center for railway information system, somebody there, faculty members, there are people from uh, colleges here also who are becoming toppers. So that's a spread of audience uh, that we have. The other place where we showcase toppers is inside your local chapters. So every local chapter also for every run, we showcase who are the toppers from that particular local chapter in that particular semester. We showcase it. If you all have seen your pages, you will see that that data is also available. Okay, so for people who are familiar with it, who have been with us for a year or more, yes, you do know all this, but I would like to go through this again. For people who are new, this is what we do for uh, rating all the local chapters. So we uh, calculate the score. There is a way in which we apply a formula and calculate the score based on the performance of the candidates from your college across all courses in a particular semester or run as we call it. So candidates can be students, faculty members, whoever says I belong to this XYZ local chapter, everybody's score we calculate here. So what we do it? Not too much weightage for the numbers if you see. So it is not that a college who gives us 2000 students will become the top rated, not going to be that. We cap that at 10 points. So we do a point 0.1 into number of students capped at 10. So beyond 100 if you have also, actually it's not going to matter. It's not going to contribute to that factor. Then we have successfully completed a weightage of 1. Number of elite we have a weightage of 2. Number of gold we have a weightage of 10. Number of toppers we have weightage of 20. So we do this calculation across all the candidates. Then we put them in descending order. We get the top 100 to become what we call as rated. Uh, we rate them as uh, AAA, AA and A. Uh, we give them that grading. So the top 100 get that. So that is what we uh, put up in our website every semester. So 1 to 10 will be AAA. They get the rating of AAA. 11 to 50 will be AA. 51 to 100 will be getting a rating of A. So this is what we use. This formula is not set in stone based on how, you know, performances change, how, uh, uh, you know, the courses change, whatever we think is more suited to the performance, we might keep changing it. We will inform you ahead too of that. Okay, 
So for the uh, local chapters who get it, there is felicitation that happens on the uh, website anyway it comes up. But in these kind of functions is where we want to recognize the contribution of the SPOCs and the management of that particular institute. So you will uh, see it happening at maybe 12.45, 1 after our presentations and our interaction. So these are the kind of certificates that go out. This is a plaque that goes out to the uh, college. So this is for the uh, AA, this is for the... Okay, what happens to the other colleges who have participated, who have had students in the run? There are a lot of SPOCs who are working continuously, yes, but have not gotten into the top 100. So don't we do anything for them? Definitely not. We know a lot of people that we are working continuously at least. I think as of date out of the 1400 that we have, 900 of them are pretty active. We are with them on, you know, various modes of communication. So we'd like to definitely recognize a few of them too. So this time we have used two criteria. Till last time it was only that if you had 25 or more uh, candidates present for either of the exams, we were recognizing them as an active local chapter. But this time we said, okay, what if suppose somebody does not have 25, but they have a gold medalist or a topper. Why not recognize them? Because some effort has gone into that too. So that was another factor we have put in here and this is what we have done. So we have another 376. So the top 100 definitely are recognized as active. But apart from the 376 local chapters also, we are recognizing as active local chapters based on this criteria. So either you've had 25 candidates participate in the September-October exams, both put together, or you've had a topper or a gold medalist amongst your candidates, even if you didn't have 25. Uh, yeah, so the SPOCs also get certificates and this is the kind of certificate that we are giving out. This is for the uh, AAA rated uh, colleges, AA, there's the A that is SPOC, as well as the certificates for the SPOCs who had of the active local chapter. So uh, Nietzsche, we are just putting out the tag saying that what, how are we rated that uh, local chapter as active, whether it's based on participation or whether it's based on them having a topper or a gold medalist. So this is it. Okay. Mentors. So uh, I hope all of you know that mentors has been one of uh, the strong points that we have on our portal. I don't think we see this kind of mentors across, say, a Coursera, ADEX or something. If you have gone there, they do have something called community TAs and so on, which is overall. But it's not like a college specific that they have enabled. So here, the concept of mentor is that from a college, if you have a group of students who are participating in a course and you want somebody to actively follow up on how are they doing the course. Are they going through it? Are they submitting assignments? If they are submitting assignments, what are the scores they are getting? This will be especially important if you're getting the credit system into your college because you want to know that they're doing well in the course and they are following the videos, right? So there is a, uh, for those of you who know, or I would like to just uh, share with you, the SPOC can nominate the mentors for every course. So they would essentially be faculty members from your college. If they know the subject, very well and good. If the subject is new, but they still want to just motivate the students, that's also fine with us. It could be either ways. So once you add the mentor from your login on the online courses portal, and the mentor has to enroll to the course too. Assuming he, he or she has enrolled to the course, the SPOC will see it inside their login. Then they say, okay, these people are the mentors for every course. Once that is done, one thing which we do not do on our portal, at some level we do respect privacy. We say that we will not let you tell us, okay, now attach these students to the mentor. So that does not happen. So what the students of your particular local chapter will find is, they will find a drop down with a mentor tab. And whoever are mentors for that particular course, they will find their names and email IDs there. The students have to go and now click saying, okay, I want to be attached to this mentor. Once that happens, the mentor will get a mentees tab and you can see the assignment scores of all the mentees attached to you. So this is one sure shot way of finding out what are they doing in that particular course. So what do we do for mentors again, based on performance? So the mentor doing the course, Writing the exams, submitting assignments is not a criteria at all because we are only looking at his mentoring aspect of it and not his own capability in that. So we are only checking what is the performance of the mentees there. And this time we had, uh, yeah, so this is the formula again we do, one into number of mentees successfully complete. All this is on the portal, I'm just putting it out here for your reference. So more than 10, if you have a score, we are recognizing those mentors. So ideally, how do you get a more than 10? Any 10 of your mentees have at least appeared for the exam. You get that. If you have five mentees who have successfully completed, two mentees who at least got a elite certification, at least one who was a gold medalist. So you get a certificate. We recognize that that person did do something for their own students. So this time we had a total of 47, 47, 4,747 mentors who were 
nominated by the SPOCs across the various 159 courses. Out of that, when we applied it, 1174 have qualified to get the certificates. So that certificates will also be given for the local chapters who are here today. They will be getting your thing. And uh, the remaining we have just put our statistics, why didn't the other guys get it? So 619, the mentees have not registered for the exam. 69, the mentees are registered but they didn't attend the exam. 2884, the mentees were present but we didn't get the 10 point criteria that we talked about. And uh, just as a off, uh, offbeat kind of a stat, 879 mentors took up exams, either in that course or some other course, it could be there. And 49 were gold medalists. So these are essentially faculty member statistics that we are putting out here. And we had 17 mentors who had more than 100 students that they were mentoring. So normally we recommend that 50 is a good number. Beyond that, you can't reach out to the students and actively work with them. But sometimes the college says there's only one person and nobody has known the subject and I want this. So we say, okay, so there were like 17 mentors who had this. Okay, so uh, mentors also till last time we did not have any differentiation in how they mentored, but this time we wanted to also showcase that. So uh, we have brought out three categories of mentor certificates. That's, that's just a stamp on your certificate. So one will say a mentor with either a topper or a gold medalist. One of your mentees was that. Mentors with total exam register mentees, more than 100 who had registered and both of it together. So those who get mentor certificates, you will get one of these if you fall into it. Otherwise, you'll just get a certificate without the stamp. So these are the kind of certificates we have prepared for the uh, mentors. So there's a plain certificate with no badge and so on. Okay. So based on last time's ratings, this is how it has changed. For those of you who know last semesters, this was a radical change for us with, uh, with respect to at least a few local chapters. So Valchand has come in as uh, the top rated local chapter. Do we have the SPOC here today? <laughs> so uh, we have them in this time and uh, Valchand was a surprising thing. For those of you who wonder how to scale up, what to do, maybe you should talk to him because uh, this is September, October, right? In March, April was the first time I think they were participating in the courses big time. And March, April, Solapur was not even in our uh, map of India that we even had a center there. We've not even thought of it in that way. And then we started seeing exam registrations. One day we find we are looking at numbers. 500, Solapur, where is Solapur now? We have not even seen it. So then we find out, okay, this is there. And we said, who is this college? So it is Valshad. Then we had to scramble like three weeks or four weeks ahead. We had to talk to TCS because we had not even planned for it, worked for it, you know. And then we saw 500, we had to work. There's no TCS dedicated center there. Those guys had to this one. Finally, we were able to give them a center and that was about uh, 500 in March, April, I think. This time you had more than 1,400. 1,400 students somehow they brought in. Uh, so we'll hear from him probably as to what they do with their students, how they get it done and so on. So this time we actually in Solapur we had probably six or seven centers and it's still growing. So we're telling TCS you might want to look at you know putting a dedicated center there the way the numbers are going. So they were they are the top uh, they are the top rated local chapter today. So that is uh, there again. Charotar is something which has been scaling up gradually. Last three times we have seen them come to Madras. We've interacted with them. We had workshops. And today they are in the top 10. Of course, there are others from the south that are also doing well. So actually, if you compare, the, the lists are available on the website of the last time's run, the previous run and so on. You can also see the shifts that are happening as newer local chapters come in and more of them adopted based on how you adopt it. it the numbers keep changing here. So this is here. And we have the other colleges. And for those of you, how many of you are from Art Science College here? Okay. We have quite a few, I mean out of 1400, I think about 300 to 350 are art science colleges that we have as local chapters today. And we tell them that don't be scared of doing an IIT course. It is quite fine, it is very accessible, it is very doable for your students and we are not primarily an engineering portal also. We want to also, you know, give access to them because there's always BSc computer science, math, science, physics, they all can take the courses, management is there, BC is there, so all that is fine. So that's there. And in the top 100, I think we have quite a few local chapters that are also featured. They are in the rating of between 1 to 100, which is says that it's definitely doable. It's not just the engineering colleges that you see there. So this list is there. I'm just putting it out for you to see. It's all also available on the website. Okay. Again, this is some data that we wanted to present. Uh, for many people, we've already started seeing emails. For those of you who know, we have uh, opened the exam form this time much ahead. We said as you enroll, you can start registering for the exams even before the course run. We wanted to make it a little more flexible. So it's going to be open till March 7th. 
And the other change we have brought about this time is uh, kind of consolidate our operations also because the logistics was getting a little too much. Like you saw last time we had uh, 103 centers, 83 centers. Within a span of four weeks, we are scrambling to do all that, you know, and twice we open the form, twice we are doing hall tickets, our reps are going twice. Uh, everything is kind of getting too much across the country. And as Professor Shevgonkar said, the gate has been going on for probably 20 years now. They have a well-oiled system. The handover is so easy from institute to institute. And any institute takes the load only once in eight years as it comes by rotation. So they have processes that are so strict. NPTEL, currently we are coordinating it, of course, with help from all the other institutes. But then the system is still not set. Like what we see, suddenly Solapur comes up with 500, some other city comes up with 1,000. We just don't know how to handle it. And few of us are just doing it as we go. So we wanted to consolidate operations this time. Another feedback that we got from candidates was for me to travel twice to some cities difficult. Once I have to go in September, once I have to go in October. So can't you put it together was another uh, you know, constant feedback we were getting from people. The third thing that we thought when we should consolidate numbers was this data, which I want to definitely present to you. So as you can see, almost 95% of the total registrations register for one examination. Okay, there is about a 5 or 6% varying. So I'm showing you the last two runs that we have, which register for even two examinations. And it's like 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.8% which do three or four examinations. So we said if we are going to have the bulk of 95 doing one exam, so even if we club it over a weekend or something, it's not going to change things too much. So unless again, you know, we get feedback and we are seeing colleges going across and they're saying, no, all our students will do three exams or something like that, it's difficult. We will look into it. For this time, we want to do this trial method to see is it going to work because it will help us. We do everything only once and uh, there is a consolidation happening at some point. So this is how we have done it. These are the numbers for last time, three exams, four exams that we have. Okay, these are some tidbits that I wanted to give you. Uh, so sometimes we ourselves say, you know, somebody doing one course itself is difficult if you're sincere, following up with assignments. As we told you, every week it's going to take you eight hours. Apart from whatever you're doing, you may be a professional, you may be a student, or uh, whatever, you're going to spend like, if you're sincere, it is six to eight hours of work every week. That is one course. Two courses, 16 hours. Three courses, 24 hours per week that you're going to actually study. Are there people who've done it? Yes. Are they people who are doing well in it? Are they topping it? Yes, again. So this is some stats we wanted to show. So there's a person who has done four courses this time, topped one course. There are people who have done three courses, they've registered, they are in the top 1%, top 2%, and so on. So there are people who are also writing two courses, three courses ka exams, and topping those courses. Again, another piece of information, what we found in, uh, I think, March, this is September, right? Last year, September, October 2016, when we had our exams, there was a girl from Calcutta who had uh, written four exams, a topper in all four exams. So we said, oh, wow, you know, this is something like uh, maybe uh, she was an employed professional and she had done some soft skill courses, this, that, whatever, but she had topped all four. We thought it was a one time. We came down to March, to March, April 2017. There was another engineer from Samsung who did four electrical engineering courses, topper in all four courses. Then we said, this is second time now. Okay, are we going to see a repeat? We did see a repeat. So there's another person this time, a working professional, topper in four courses. Again, he's written four exams, he's topped all four exams. So it's not impossible, very doable, people have been doing it, but yes, the numbers are small. So that is something that we wanted to show. Also that we have, uh, as you know, we do exams only in India currently, we don't do exams outside of India. We are seeing a lot of interest from people outside. So they're asking us for that. So we said, first we want to stabilize here. We are not in stable in India. We want to stabilize our operations here, then we'll get to you guys. So that's where, but uh, people who are really keen on getting a certificate from us, in March, April, we had a faculty member from Saudi Arabia who flew into India. She came on Saturday night, gave an exam from 9 to 12, 4 p.m. was a flight out, straight from the exam center, went to the Madras airport. She came to Madras, wrote and she flew out. She got some 85% some course. We thought again a one-off. This time we had an engineer from Turkey who flew in because he wanted to do some noise control vibration course. He wrote an exam. Again, just one day, he didn't know anything, you know. His payment was not going through, he was not, so we said, you just come first, you write the exam. So where do I come? We said, Madras, we are here, we'll help you. So he came and he actually did and he, uh, did the exam and he went out. So he was like quite happy because that's uh, close to what he works in. So that again happened. We also, to say the local chapters that Ria was uh, talking about, uh, saying that we have about 1,300 today, we have international local chapters as of today. I don't know if the news item came in the Bombay thing, we had a press release also. So we have local chapters in Afghanistan and two in Ethiopia. So we are slowly getting there also that we will start. 
Okay, so these are some more people in the other side across runs that we are seeing people take up exams. Even now I had one faculty member here who said who's done five exams last year and so on. So there are people who've done 17 courses, 15 courses, 10. So every time we go to center, so all of us go to exam centers every time to monitor. So we look out for familiar faces. Okay, I know this faculty member is going to come. That he, has he come? Has he come? We just go there, talk, chat up with them, and so on. So we do have a lot of regulars who are doing exams and taking courses semester after semester with us. Uh, okay, there was a recent survey that we had done because MS, MHRD wanted some data from us saying uh, how are colleges and institutions adopting your NPTEL courses in various aspects. So about maybe three, four weeks back we put it out and we had some uh, uh, results uh, consolidated. We got 229 responses, so this is what we have gotten. So university affiliated we have 174, 48 are autonomous, 7 deemed, so that is all okay. Uh, do you, pro does your institution provide course credits? 42 have said yes currently and 187 have said no currently, so we expect that numbers to go up once they start adopting it. Then uh, anything else? From which year onwards are students encouraged? Many of them are saying first year, which is a good thing. I will ask Professor Pratap to talk about how these can be adopted for the gate exam. Somebody is asking, saying can you start it for the gate also? So I'll ask him to talk about how they can start uh, using these courses for as preparation for the gate exams. Then uh, which type does your college uh, course duration? It seems to be equally placed. Then uh, online courses, which do you want core elective? Very surprisingly, we're seeing a lot of them taking core courses. We thought elective might be the preference, but looks like a lot of them are taking core courses. Then CBCS seems to be implemented, but not uh, this uh, level. Then there was one question which said, are you allowed to take uh, course credits in combo? What we meant here was suppose the uh, academic council, you know, approves three credit course. Can the student take a two credit and a one credit, can you club it and give it to them? So some of them said yes, but uh, most of them said no there. And student activity points, I don't know how many of you are aware of this. Are you aware of this concept called student activity points? No? Okay, so at least for the engineering colleges, I don't know about the art science. Engineering colleges, I think the, every student to graduate, along with the credits he gets from passing courses, has to get some 100 or 200 student activity points. And these points are based on the activities he does outside of the curriculum. Whether he's a student leader, he's in the student council, does he attend conferences, is he doing some project, something like that, they have some weightage. So some uh, universities have approved that online courses can be taken for student activity points. GTO, for instance, has that. How many points is it? 100 for online itself, no, 20 points, right, for online courses, 6 points, huh? okay, the Kerala Technical University, for instance, has the whole 100 points that can be taken, so if they take two courses, they've given 50 plus 50, so a lot of uh, students from Kerala take it for just completion of that, so GTU has it, I don't know about the Maharashtra, but maybe you want to check out whether there are any points for taking an online course which will be uh, contributing towards the student activity points. If so, even if your college is not taking it for credit, it will at least, you know, help them in that. So that is something that you can uh, try. Okay. Uh, that's here. So we also have published the list of colleges who have said yes, that credit transfer is already happening. Many SPOCs write to us, can you give us some names of colleges? We would like to talk to those SPOCs, see how they've done it and so on. So we put up this list and from this list you can find out the SPOC and actually write to them. So that should be possible. These are the colleges that have already implemented online courses for credit transfer within the system. Many of them are autonomous or uh, private or deemed, yes, but some of them are also in the government system. Okay, so these are colleges. These are the universities that have currently approved. So it's not yet moved to the college level probably, but the academic councils have approved. These are the universities that have approved that online courses can be taken for credit. So this list is also available. You might want to check out on that. Check out what are the guidelines there, any meeting minutes have come out and so on. Okay, okay I'll uh, quickly run through operations. So operations, uh, we have a, a set of 226 courses coming up this semester. There are uh, the 12 week courses start on Jan 22nd, 4 and 8 weeks start on February 5th. Again, this was a shift we did because many of the, we are trying to time our calendar across uh, India. And uh, as we know, some uh, states start in December, some states as late as mid-February. And it's not possible for us to satisfy everybody and keep everybody happy. So kind of we, we are trying to hit a midline there. So Jan 22nd are for the 12 weeks. We thought at least the colleges that start by February, the four and eight weeks will be accessible to them. So February 5th, we've started that. And with the single exam run, this seems to kind of uh, work. The other feedback we kind of kept getting was that as soon as you complete the course, you're asking us to write an exam. We don't get preparation time. 
we thought it was better that he doesn't forget what he studied and just goes write the exam but looks like people want some time for preparation so in this model i think all the courses get at least 2 3 weeks time before they come in for the examination so that's something that we are trying to do so the exam dates are april 28th and 29th exam form is open currently uh, the way the exams have been split I hope you all are aware we are not doing 12, 226 courses ka exams in the morning and afternoon but on 28th we will have the exams for 226 courses, 29th we will have exams for 226 courses. Morning session has exams for 111 courses, afternoon for 115. So that is how we have done the 226 split. We have kind of worked around and done a logic to say if Python is in the morning, C is in the afternoon, algorithms is there, something else is here. If there are two soft skill courses, there's one there, one here, whatever. We have tried to see how the scheduling works, but of course we'll have to keep learning and see the feedback as we receive it, okay? 7th March is the last date for the exam form currently that we'll be closing. Okay, uh, a quick run through for those who are not familiar uh, with the thing. So all the SPCs have logins on two places. One is the online courses portal that you have a login on, one on the local chapter website that you have a login on. Online courses portal, what all can you do? You can see the candidates who are enrolled from your college in all the courses. You can put in mentors there, you can just say. And if we have the money for fee waiver and we are opening up that category, you can also uh, nominate people for fee waivers. So these three things you can do on the online courses portal currently. On the local chapter, what can you do? You can say yes, no to whether you'll be paying by bulk in the form. You can uh, see the candidates who are registering for the examinations. When the hall tickets come, you'll see it there. When the results come, you'll see it there. E-certificates will be given there. So that is a portal where you'll have the other login. Any surveys or something we do will be coming up there. So these are two logins that the SPOC currently uses. So SPOC admin, you have a thing, you click on it, you will see something like this, where in course wise you will see all the numbers, how many are enrolled and so on. Once you click on the course ID, you will see whether they are student, faculty and this. Only the faculty members can be nominated as mentors, for then the boxes will be active. You can put in the mentors there. For scholarship, the last column will be uh, made uh, active. When we have the money for that, I'll talk about that. But otherwise, this is the thing. Okay, uh, one frequent uh, mail that we get from SPOCs is that there are many people enrolled from my college, I don't see them inside my login. The primary reason for that will be, there are two questions they have to answer correctly when they enroll. One is, do you belong to an NPT local chapter? They have to say yes. And after saying yes, if they say, they will not have the patience to ideally search for your particular college, so they will not find it, they'll say others and manually enter a name there. If there's a spelling mistake, a space thing, something in between, it will not match. From the drop down, if once they go to your city, they check that college and uh, select it, then it will be seen inside. So they can also do it post enrollment. So even today you find that say already 300 have enrolled, you're seeing 50. Right back to the 250 saying edit profile is an option, go there and just change this, you will immediately see them here. So one of the things that uh, uh, is there, so basically they have to do, we can't do anything from our part. So this is something that you will have to tell them. Same thing faculty, if you don't see them as mentors option that you're seeing them, faculty also have to enroll to the courses. If they want to be mentors, they have to say they are faculty, they have to choose your college in the same way, then only you can nominate them as mentors, okay? Okay, so suggestion for new SPOCs who are here, I don't know how many of you are, how many of you are new SPOCs have never been in a run with us? Okay, some are there definitely. So what are the next steps, a quick uh, run through that we would say is enroll to an NPTEL online course yourself. I mean it's not for the writing the exam, that's beyond the point but you know just for you to see what is the experience of a MOOC. If a student comes and tell you ma'am I can't see this tab, I don't know this content, some announcement, you want to know where those things are. So be in a course to at least find out weekly how do you put content, how is the forum being there and so on. It will help you do that. Go to the end process also, just see that how it works. And if you want an exam day, you can just go and see how the exams happen, that is all possible. Then, uh, okay, SPOC task currently, you can add mentors, you can request for an exam city. And we need the student numbers for the exam city because currently we are also consolidating those numbers. So, uh, as I was uh, talking outside and I was saying, I think in Maharashtra we have about uh, 17 exam centers as of today. Gujarat also, I think we have about four currently and the other states we have. But Maharashtra out of the 17, I think in maybe about 8 or 9, we have opened only on Sunday. We have not opened on Saturday if you go to the form and see. This is because we have done this from the previous uh, exam runs numbers. So if we had only about 100 or 120 registering in the previous exam run, even extrapolating it, we expect say 200 or something. 
the Sunday should suffice for us to run the exams that day. And assuming that that one course exam works, which is the 95% guys, we are thinking that that should suffice. But if any of your college now in those seven uh, or ten cities feel suddenly no, we have implemented this, you're going to get 500 students from our college. Write to us today, we will open it for both days. But then we will have to see those numbers. Because uh, sometimes uh, SPOC is right to us saying, we'll give you 500, we get 50 at the end of it. We'll do all arrangements, then we have to cancel, we have to reallocate, we have to remove, then we have to do that. Because for financial logistics, we have to do that, exam representatives going there and so on. So if you think that Sunday is not sufficient and your college is going to suddenly increase numbers, tell us today, we will facilitate. Otherwise, in those nine or ten cities, we are going to have just on uh, Sunday the exams. If you want to write four exams, suppose you are from, say, Amravati, we have opened only on Sunday, but your, maybe three people of uh, your uh, college want to write four exams, maybe you can choose Pune, Bombay or something like that and go there to write the exams. That's a possibility that is there. Okay. Uh, SPOCs, we also, uh, two more things we want from you. We need a six-month preparation time for offering any course that you would like to see on the NPTEL portal. So if you tell us some course list today and say offer it next week in January, we can't do it. We can definitely do it for July though. So if you think that some courses uh, which have been offered previously are good, if, if it's there on the NPTEL repository already and you want it for certification, tell us new courses, send us requests. Then we can work on it across institutes and see whether we can offer in July. So that's another thing that you can give us feedback on. And also feedback. A generic feedback about the whole program, which we'll come to as a live session now, we'll get to you uh, as an interactive thing. So that's the most important we want from you. What are the, you know, problems you face in your college? What are the uh, block stones that you have? Uh, how receptive is the portal? How is our, even the offices that we work, right? We might have our own drawbacks. What are the problems you face in working with us? Anything with related to the course, to the, this one, suggestions, improvements, all that we would like to definitely hear from you. So this can be through emails, phone calls, local offices, contact our address office, it's all fine. Okay, issues we are aware of and trying to uh, correct. Many uh, common things that we get is that the exam centers are far away, they are not there. As I was telling outside, NPTEL does not decide on the exam centers. TCS Ion is our exam partner, they decide on the exam centers. What we do is we say in Latur, in Solapur, we need 1000 people, we need 200 people, we need 500 people. Then they decide on where they have to put based on their partnership with colleges or whether they have a dedicated center or whatever. So sometimes uh, we recommend colleges saying that if they say I don't have a center in this particular city, we say we have local chapters there, do you want to work with them? But that is all we say, we put the SPOC in touch with TCSI on and we say that you work with them now because there is money involved, we don't get into that part of it. Whether the management wants to do it, doesn't want to do it because TCS when they also get into partnership, they will ask you for allowing them to uh, conduct exams throughout the year. They will not do partnership just for the NPTEL exam. So if they have say railway recruitment board exams, SBI exams coming, bank exams, gate exam, they will expect for all the work that they put in, for all the exams they can use your college. They have some of their own uh, operations thing. So we don't get into all that, we don't tell them, we say, if you don't have anything you want, contact, I can give you a contact. Beyond that, it is between you and them, whether it works out or doesn't work out. So that's all we do at uh, this point in time. So uh, getting a center in your college, no guarantees. Getting a center in that city, definitely yes. But the other challenges, again, as we keep saying is, gate exams book their center six months in advance. They know which college they're going to, how many numbers and all that. They're able to pick all the best centers. Many exams like the banking exams do it nine months ahead. We do it one month ahead. March 7th, if you're closing the form, April 28th is our exam. By March uh, 12th or 13th, we'll give them the list. That's when they can actually finalize centers. Though we block centers, we can finalize only then, which means that if some customer's guaranteeing them a center, he will give it off to them. Then we lose our thing. But uh, he tells me saying that, give me numbers. Will you guarantee that you will get 1,000 here? I don't know whether we'll get 1,000 there. It only goes as per registration and so on. So that's something we're not able to do currently. We are working for the best, whatever we can and whatever we are trying, some kind of, uh, you know, predictions that we do, we do work. But this is the thing. So far away means one thing we tell colleges, can you arrange for college buses to take your students there to the exam and come back? Many colleges do that, seems to work fine. That might be one possibility that you uh, can try. So that is there. Then uh, delay in dispatch of hard copies of certificates. This time I think we were better off than last year. Last year it was, uh, I mean March, April was a little bad. This time we had a fire in our office. For those of you who don't know, our entire office got burned down in Madras along with the studio too. And we had some recovery to do there. So there was a delay in the certificate dispatch. This time I think we have done a better job, I would say a little faster we did from the, so all the 
dispatch of certificates, hard copies, e-certificates, everything comes centralized from IIT Madras currently. So that's why we have the same staff of 40 to deal with the 1,000 we were dealing in 2014 and today also that we deal with the 70,000 is the same. So almost we are improving processes but that's the kind of manpower we work with. So we will definitely try to improve the processes that is there. We've automated the certificate generation process currently and the QR code is also on it. Delay in fee waiver, for those of you who know, fee waiver process we have changed this time. So till last time in uh, March, April 2017, fee waiver was that you would approve for candidates to get the fee waiver. On the form itself, we would say pay 500 rupees, right? And they would only do that, the fee waiver would go across. But the problem we faced there was there was at least a 10 to 15 percent absenteeism in the people who availed the fee waiver, which translated into something like about 15 lakhs, which was not being used because these guys didn't come to the exam. We had to pay TCS and do all the logistics and we were wasting the Arisen money. So when we presented reports to Arisen, they came back and asked us, you told me students want the waiver, I have given you the money and you are wasting my money. So we didn't have an answer at that point. So we changed the process in September, October. We said you uh, pay the money ahead, we'll approve you for the fee waiver, but then you have to appear for the exam and at least pass it. So that was a criteria that we have implemented uh, this time in September, October. In spite of that, we had about 18,000 students who are availing the fee waiver this time. So they have appeared and passed the exam and we are pushing it. Fee waiver, for those of you who have applied, it is getting a little delayed. We had a, a gross, uh, you know, a wrong estimation of the way the accounts processes work. So it's kind of taking time there. September fee waiver has already been pushed. October's will happen very soon. So in March, April, we are again trying to see what is the fastest way in which we can release the money. But process will essentially remain the same. One feedback when I open the session again, I would uh, request for is uh, we did a survey with a closed group of SPOCs. So one thing we found that uh, for faculty members do we need fee waivers? Okay, that's a question that keeps coming up again and again. For faculty members should be up the criteria of when they get a fee waiver. Should it be 40? Should it be 60? Should it be 70? So we got some mixed response when we did our closed uh, group survey. And any other way in which you think we should implement this whole scheme because with the increasing numbers, the money we have is not sufficient. So we want to see that it also reaches the right people. So we uh, appreciate uh, feedback on that also. Okay, on the SPOC group, for those who have seen, there's nothing suddenly happening on the group. No mails, no uh, this one, people are not complaining. What happened? We moderated the group. So we stopped all emails to the group. We are reading emails, we are responding individually and what was relevant to everybody we are pushing on to the group. But the problem there is, I don't know, I feel it's like suddenly got dead, you know, because it looks like nobody knows what the other person is writing or whatever. Yeah, it was a pain when people were saying, I received posters, I received brochures, you didn't send me this for everybody, thousand people to know. But uh, suddenly it's gone quiet. So we are getting the mails, we are responding to individually what was relevant, we are putting it out there. So that is happening and uh, this is all fine. Okay, one thing we want the SPOCs to definitely tell your students is ask them to check emails from our office. Once they register for the exam, suppose we are reallocating centers, we are changing, we put it in the form saying in this date we will send you, this. we send an SMS, we send an email, we try even making calls, we inform the local SPOC also that your college students, we are doing this because we don't have, but somehow they are totally unaware and when the hall ticket comes, they are suddenly, why didn't you tell me this, I don't know this at all, you didn't ask me and all. And we say we have sent you an SMS, we have sent you an email, you have just not checked. So one thing we'd like you to request your students is please ask them to check their mailbox for mails from us. Whatever we send so that they are aware it's their exam at the end of the day. They have to be I think a little more careful about you know what information we are giving them. That is one thing we wanted to say. And um, changes in the after the deadline we are not going to encourage this time. So all that is going to be finalized, pre frozen. We are not going to take any photo and uh, this changes. And uh, another thing with respect to students we wanted to say one thing we are still working on is we are not seeing too many students on the course discussion forums. For those of you who have been on the courses, I don't know how your courses, some courses like Python course, C course, every day we see 200 posts. It's too active, there are a lot of them asking questions, very nice. But some courses are totally quiet. They ask like one question and that will also be can you extend the deadline, you know. And we like, can't you ask for something which is related to the lessons, you know. This is your time to ask the instructor for questions, ask doubts, get clarifications, you know, ask for anything that you want. They are available there for that three months to just answer you, make use of it. So one thing we want to tell students is saying that get onto the forum, check the forum, you know, ask questions. Some people have doubts. I am attempting an assignment. Can I ask a question regarding the assignment? Yes, please do. That's the main point of the thing. 
Ask them, don't tell them, Sh give me the answer, I'll plug it in. That we won't do. But you know, is, can you give a hint? Is this way okay? Something else there? Please ask. Faculty members, we encourage you to ask technical doubts. Whatever you want relating to the subject, maybe the recent research trends, say something else. Our faculty will be really happy if they get that kind of feedback from you all, saying that these people are really interested in the course. So forum is something that you, another feedback we get is students are not too sure about English. We've had students who write Tamil in English, Hindi in English, and we do understand it. We do respond also. So don't worry about the English you write, the way it is there, grammatically correct. We don't even know who you are at the end of the day, right? It's anonymous at some level. We are not going to judge you. We don't have anything. So encourage them to come there, ask questions, learn more about the topics, you know, uh, uh, support each other there also, answer others' questions. One thing why we are saying this is we are going to start something called an industry associate program like Professor Pratap was saying. We are getting industry people into it and we are seeing how are they going to start recruiting. One of the things industries might do, which we've had in a few courses, they put their HR people on the forum. They see who are the people who are, you know, uh, they're communicating. How are they communicating? Because it's a soft skills thing that you're going to get from the forum. So that's very important. So if they start doing that, it might be good that your students actually communicate there. That's also another reason you should have them on the forum discussing about it. Okay, photos, this is the kind of photos we see, selfies and uh, small photos. Three people in a photo. We get three people in one photo for the certificate. <laughs> we don't even know who the guy is and we have to ask who are you in these three, you know. But that's the way we get uh, photos for certificates. Certificates with Taj Mahal in the background. <laughs> it's an IIT certificate. We actually tell them it's an IIT certificate. Why do you want Taj Mahal in the background? Can't you give us one thing? But yeah, that's how uh, we get it. Uh, I'll ask Pratap to probably take on from here. Pratap? So uh, even during the break, there were many questions. So I think when we open for discussion, a uh, lot of it we will answer. Uh, I did try to answer as they were asked, but I think some of them are uh, of general interest. I think a lot of you will have the same kind of question. So uh, uh, one of the things as we have been thinking about for a while, uh, and certainly as we get into credit transfer being a routine activity, uh, is to ensure that uh, you, know, you know what courses are going to come when. All of us know what courses are going to come when. So that is, I think, an important thing. Even during the break, I think uh, one of the uh, one of you were, uh, was asking, saying that uh, you need to know at least six months in advance. So, so that is something that we are trying to do. Uh, as we see also that a lot of people are taking core courses and uh, electives also uh, to different uh, degrees. We are trying to set up a situation where uh, you will know predictably ahead of time uh, in the July semester what courses will come, January semester what courses will come. At least a fair fraction of them. So some key courses we can tell you ahead of time that it will be available. Uh, we are trying to move in that direction. Uh, it has taken us some time because we have also grown in the number of courses. You can still see that we have not reached any kind of uh, stability. It's still climbing. But uh, hopefully that we have got enough number of courses and enough number of course runs that uh, both our faculty and our uh, you know, staff uh, feel confident that uh, we can start uh, you know, doing this in a predictable way. So uh, uh, we will try to set up such that all core courses show up between Jan uh, January and July and then also have uh, lots of uh, new electives uh, coming up all the time. Uh, right now that is not yet there. Not all courses are available as MOOCs. You may see a lot more available in the uh, uh, NPTEL uh, uh, website as such, but as a MOOC offering maybe not all the courses are uh, yet there. Electives are getting offered to differing degrees. I mean, there's no uh, no fixed list on electives. This is li literally an infinite list uh, of electives that we can offer, but it is uh, getting done. Uh, hopefully, maybe by July 2018, when we come up, we'll start seeing something of a plan uh, where we will be able to give you uh, some, some indication of what the flow of courses is so you can plan uh, credit transfer activities in your college uh, accordingly. Uh, hopefully, at least eight core courses per discipline uh, we would like to make available. Uh, through the semesters. Uh, I don't know if, if either in every semester or at least between the two semesters we will have it. Uh, fortunately for us, because we have you know uh, seven IITs and IAC involved in this, uh, we have enough faculty that uh, the same course may be offered by multiple faculty at uh, different points in time. So we don't load one faculty also up continuously. I mean we can't just expect the same person to keep on offering that course all the time uh, with thousands of students uh, enrolling for it. So that's something that we are uh, looking towards. Um, Faculty development program. So this is something that I uh, briefly mentioned uh, some time back. So uh, lo already, uh, as I said, uh, as you already saw that you know, 20 percent of the people taking those uh, courses are faculty. So uh, just the way we talk of credit transfer for students, uh, we also wanted to make it, uh, you know, uh, professionally valuable. They, I'm sure they're already finding it valuable. That's why they're taking it. But also something that is on their record that they have done it, and in some way it becomes useful for them. 
and naturally at their uh, level the thing that uh, makes sense is to uh, get it incorporated in their uh, faculty development program process. So this is something that we are looking at. Uh, what you see here is actually, I mean, uh, it is just interesting to share this with you. Uh, one of the SPOCs uh, put this table together, uh, Professor G. V. K. Sharma, who is uh, from uh, Vizag, Geetam University in Vizag. So he just made a comparison of, you know, what is, uh, what are various reasons why it would be worth doing this process. So you can see here anything from cost, the, uh, you know, travel involved, the amount of time that you have to take off of work, uh, off of uh, from your pl place of stay, etc., uh, the number of people who get exposed to it. Uh, then uh, what is the evaluation process, uh, interaction process after that the course is over or even during the course and also how often it is offered. If you take any of these criteria, you will find that you know doing it as in an online uh, process, uh, the way we are doing it on NPTEL process, uh, it gives you a lot of advantages. In ev almost every way it is advantageous to you. So, uh, so therefore, I think there is a lot of value to look at uh, this whole process uh, in, the, in the context of a faculty development program. And as I mentioned, uh, both in IIT Madras and maybe in many institutes it is there, certainly in IIT Madras it is there, in uh, IIT Bombay it is there, uh, there is this, uh, you know, faculty development process. We ourselves take, uh, I mean, attend courses uh, in our institute, in our teaching learning center, where they tell us a lot about how a course is taught. So even, you know, in my own classes I am trying to incorporate a lot of new ideas on how the course is taught, uh, which, which I have not done before. Because many times we have not formally learned uh, the teaching process. Uh, we have just learned our subject and then we are conveying it to our students. There are many things. I mean, if you attend one of these courses, I mean, if you get an opportunity, please attend. And of course, certainly we will try to make it available through this online process itself. Everything from how students are seated in the class. I mean, we have all these traditional classes uh, where everybody is seated facing the board and then you just have one board. The teacher is one end of the classroom, everybody is on the other side and then you talk. Then, you know, what we do in the class, uh, when do we allow the students to discuss? We, many times we do not give the students any chance to discuss. We just cover, I mean, one, one set of, you know, derivations or something that we want to do and then uh, the end of the class if there are some doubts people ask, some, something like that we do. There are a lot of uh, thought processes that are involved in how these classes can be made interactive, how uh, students can give an opinion on a topic even if they do not have knowledge on the topic. And then you use that opinion to help them understand the process better. Uh, even by pointing out how maybe their opinion is not fully formed, maybe what aspect they have got right, what aspect they have missed out, things like that. There are a lot of uh, uh, things like that involved in this uh, teaching learning process. So that is already there. We would like to incorporate that into our uh, faculty development program. So we are hoping that you will hear more about it. Uh, AICT is formally interested in this uh, and uh, they are working towards uh, releasing uh, some, uh, in, you know, notice to that effect that you can use NPTEL online courses for uh, faculty development program. So we are uh, actively working on that, uh, hopefully you will uh, hear about it soon, just the way we heard about uh, credit transfer aspects. So I think those were two things. So we will now open it up for discussion uh, is what we will do.